All Plan ID is done through my own study of cross-referencing through books and videos. So I'm only human, and I could be wrong. So you guys do your own study, uh, cross-reference yourself, and remember, pesticides are put down in <laughs> not only open country fields due through crop dusting, uh, just re remember where you're picking these things up at. So, hope you guys enjoy. So guys, today I thought I'd come out here to, uh, well, it's a park. <laughs> Call it a park, but it's a national park, per se. And uh, do a video with me just kind of walking around. This, this is more to help me, kind of, and maybe it'll help you guys out a little bit. Um, I've got my just one of my books on edible wild plants and I'm gonna go around and pretty much just ID different plants that I uh, that I've tried to study per se and some of them I'm not quite sure on so maybe you guys could help me out um, the mosquitoes are a little thick out today right behind me here I've got a beautiful catapa tree I mean they're all in bloom right now the blooms are starting to fade just a little bit. Kind of got out a little late for that. But, uh, yeah, there's going to be a bunch of little short clips of different plants. And, and if I can remember if they're in this book, I'll go ahead and show you the plant in the book. So you guys could kind of see what it is. But let's get started. So this plant here I have ID'd as Arrowhead. Um, I think it's also pronounced uh, Wapatu. Uh, something like that. They use the, um, well, I guess it's called a tuber uh, underneath it. It's just basically the root of it, and you can cook it up kind of like a potato, from what I understand. Uh, but I'll show you that in the book here, real fast, and then we'll move on to the next plant. So here it is in the book, guys. There you can see it says arrowhead, of course, and that's what it looks like. Now there is a different version of this that's narrower, um, but I, I don't have it in my state that I know of. So, darn ticks are getting bad too. Dang it, I've already peeled off like five ticks. I'm gonna have to get out of this little grassy area here. So this plant's not in my book. This plant here is called Poison Hemlock. I don't really play with this plant too much, but it's this one right here. I'll show you a pic or a video of it in bloom just off to, well, behind me here. That way you can see what it looks like. So here it is in bloom. You can kind of see the white umbels on top of it. But uh, yeah, just stay away from that plant. You don't want nothing to do with it. It's called poison hemlock. So guys, I haven't even moved five feet from where I originally started. And this is another one here. This here, I still haven't got this figured out, guys, yet, but this is either a wild onion or wild garlic. Um, whenever I figure that out, I'll let you know. But uh, there's a bunch of it right here, uh, all surrounding me. But uh, there's the seed heads on them. Here it is in the book. There's the wild onion. And of course, this shows pictures of the onion, leek, and the garlic. So, I have been trying to study them by pulling some of them up, but I don't do it here because this is the park. But uh, when I was in Arkansas, I pulled one up that I would have swore was, uh, there's another tick, was garlic and has that netting around it. Gee. Ticks are getting bad, guys. Let me move on here. So guys, I believe this one here to be water hemlock, which is another very poisonous plant. And its stem is purple. And usually my rule of thumb is if the stem is malted purple, something like such, pretty much stay away from it because it seems like most plants with those characteristics are poisonous. Just like the uh, poison hemlock that's directly behind me here. And I'll try to do a close-up on the stem so you can see this. Now, if I'm wrong, guys, please tell me. I, I really want to know. I don't want to be giving out wrong information. But 
You can kind of see that, and you can kind of see the leaves on this. Here, i got to peel another tick off me again. This is getting crazy, guys. <laughs> anyway, if you can kind of see that, and we'll move on to the next plant. So I promised you guys I was going to show you the poison hemlock stem here. I don't know if this is coming in. That's definitely a malted or, you know, purplish malted color on it. And there's the umbels or the white flowers on it. Yeah, we stay away from that one too. Okay. I'm going to try to hold the camera for this one, but this one here is an elderberry. Get over here, let the wind won't blow it away from me. But you can see the flowering heads on the elderberry. And here's the leaf, kind of lance shaped. But the elderberry has a hollow stem on it. And that might help you kind of help identify it also. But of course, if you cut it, then you're pretty much killing the plant. So, all right, we'll move on to the next one. I forgot to show you guys, this one was in the book. Um, of course, it doesn't show the flowering portion of it. But there's the elderberry. I kind of like this book. Um, if you guys want more information on it, you can go ahead and contact me. But uh, yeah, elderberry. Now, here, guys, maybe you can help me out on this. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm thinking this one here is called Fleabane. I need to do more research and this video will allow me to do that and of course you guys can always help me out. I'll try to get a little bit more zoomed in on it. I hate zooming on film because it really kind of ruins it but maybe it'll help. Yeah there it is. It's kind of windy today, hard to get all these things in the shot but uh, it's got a definitely a little pretty flower on it. Uh, I don't believe that one's in the book, so we'll move on. So I'm sure everybody here knows this plant here. And this one is yarrow. Um, it gets these white umbels on it, like this here. And there's a few ways that I identify it. Of course, they got some of these young shoots around it here with these long stems sticking up. But just the leaf looks like a, well, here looks like a feather and it feels like a feather it's real soft in your hand kind of I mean it just feels really good to your hand um, the root on this I have used I've dug up now this plant I, I've heard it looks like has a look-alike as a poisonous plant but uh, the smell of it and that's how I identify a lot of plants too because when you get to a plant you want to feel it touch it smell it um, at least for me, uh, that's how it makes it so easy to identify this plant because if you crush this leaf in your hand, it has a distinct odor like nothing else. <laughs> Once you get that odor in your nose, you'll just kick a patch of it up and you'll know you got it. But I uh, thought I'd show you that plant. I'll look in the book and see if it's in there. I kind of highly doubt it's in the edible book. But it definitely will be in the medicinal book, for sure. Yeah, it's not in this one. Uh, so anyway, I'll show you another plant here right next to me that hasn't actually went into bloom yet, but it's a pretty important plant. Well, not that important, but it, all plants are important. I literally just twisted the camera so you guys could see this plant. Now you, this plant here usually gets a purple flower. And it's a pretty thing that pops out of there. Now these haven't popped out yet, but you can see these little droopy, you can kind of see the arches on it. This is spiderwort. I know that they use this for things like uh, bee stings, things like that. But uh, yeah, just another plant. Oh well, guys, here's another plant. I don't know if there's any use for it really, but this here I believe is purple poppy mallow. You guys can kind of see that. But anyway, just threw that in there. So guys, this isn't a great example, but this is a smaller uh, yucca. Now the roots of this is 
used to, uh, you can make soap with it. You can make cordage with these leaves here. Uh, that actually works pretty good. I believe this is the narrow leaf version of it. But uh, anyway, they have a beautiful stalk that flowers, white flowers. If I see another stalk or a bigger version of this, um, I'll let you know. So this one in front of you guys here should be pretty familiar. Um, this is a grapevine. You can kind of see the leaf. It's pretty cool. Definitely a viney plant. Now, when the stalk gets bigger, you can cut the stalk for uh, a drinkable water. It's pretty good, at least what I've had of it. Um, I think that one's in the book, so I'll hop in here and show you. So here it is in the book. Labeled as grape. There you go. Now I believe this here is a briar. You can kind of see the distinct leaves on it. Now, a lot, some of the stem here is really thorny, so you don't want to just go around grabbing whatever is on it. You might be able to see some of the... It's kind of thorny right here, but it gets real thorny down towards the base of the stalk on one on these things. The new growth thing isn't so bad, but... Uh, Anyhow, so I wanted to show you guys this one here. This plant is usually one of the first plants to get green, and you can kind of, it's its pretty much died back now. But you can kind of see the leaf pattern on this, and it's really stickery, like Velcro almost on, on all of it. The stem is square on this one here. This one's called cleavers. These are the ones that you get these little balls stuck in your shoelaces all the time. <laughs> But anyhow, um, guys, here's another thing to take note on here. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, and I might just try to go ahead and zoom in on it. This is a vine growing up the side of this tree here. And you'll note the hairy vine, the hairiness of the vine. This here is poison ivy. So don't get the vine or the poison ivy confused with the grapevine. They're completely different. A grapevine doesn't have hairy hairs all over it. And I'll kind of lift the camera up. I know this is going to be bad camera work. I might as well go ahead and zoom out. And I'll show you. You can even start to see the fruiting berries, which will be white on the poison ivy plant. At least the ones I've ever seen. I don't even like to touch this plant. Now let's see if you can see the white fruiting berries. It's just the flowers that have bloomed now, kind of underneath. Sorry for the bad filming. I'm not going to be grabbing this tree or this ivy. You can see the leaves of three. The old saying, leaves of three, let it be. Well, we don't play with them. The leaves are all different. I'll show you some bigger ones, man. You can get huge poison ivy leaves. They don't have to be small like you kind of think they are. As you guys can also see here, it'll grow up kind of like a tree. Um, this is a poison ivy plant right here. So it's not just growing like ivy like you'd think and also it'll grow directly on the ground just like you see here and you can see all these leaves are different shape they're not all the same uh, sometimes they're dull color and sometimes they're real shiny like glossy but I wanted to show you that they're not all on a vine and sometimes it looks like a tree so keep in mind when you're walking around Let's walk right over here. This might be another good example, especially you can see the flowers underneath near the stem. That's what the white part. Sorry about the wind, guys. Some of them leaves get pretty large. And some of them are very, very small. But I think the next plant we're going to do is woodbine. I'll show you that plant. Because it, a lot of people at least I've noticed recently that a lot of people get confused. They confuse poison ivy with woodbine. And they're just completely different. Well, kind of, pretty much. The leaves on woodbine, there's five leaves. And it does ivy up a tree. And here's a small version of it right here where we were just looking earlier on this hairy vine. But you can see this vine, it's not hairy. And if you can, well, I don't know if the lighting's good enough here. 
but you can see there's five leaves. And I'll take you around and show you some more because it's everywhere. Uh, a lot of times it's also called Virginia creeper. Well, actually, a lot of people know it as Virginia creeper, but you'll see it climbing up all sorts of trees or sometimes just uh, on the ground, like right here is a prime example of it right here. Now this also, I think the reason why some people um, get it confused with poison ivy is because some people do get contact dermatitis on it. They um, will start to itch from it. So anyways, uh, from my research I'll show you in the book, but um, the leaves are not edible and the berries are definitely not edible. They'll turn like a purple like little drooping purple berries with purple stems. Yeah, don't touch that stuff, guys. But uh, I think they were saying that the inner bark of this is edible, but I wouldn't recommend it, be honest with you, just because if some of it's poisonous, I just kind of stay away from it myself. Um, but we'll look in the book real fast, and I'll show you another example of it. You can see here in the picture, nice little colored drawing. And it has the little curlies that attach to the tree there. But uh, it's labeled as woodbine. Here, I'll go show you another one, possibly a bigger leaf on it, because the leaf sizes all vary from the size of the plant. Here's some new growth of one. You can kind of see it growing out of there. But uh, you don't really want to touch it, to be honest with you. But that's woodbine. And this one here, guys, is plantain. Now, these new shoots right directly up the center are really tender ones. Um, I usually look at that stuff, guys. Tick right there. Unbelievable. Anyway, these smaller leaves from it are really tasty. Uh, somebody showed me that the other day. Um, because I had tried the bigger leaves just like they are, but these smaller ones are way tender. And a real easy way to kind of identify this plantain is usually it's in a disturbed soil base anyway, like on trails or in your yards or out at parks. But you can really see the veiny stems on this. And I'll see if I can break this stem for you so you can kind of see you know, the hairy fibers. See this? the hairy fibers that come out of it. Now each one of those fibers goes up through one of these veins on the back. But they're, they're fairly strong for their size. I mean you can kind of see I'm tugging on it. But that's plantain for you, or at least the broad leaf. We don't have a lot of narrow leaf in my state so more than likely won't see much of that or probably definitely won't see it in this film. I should go ahead and show you the plantain in the book. It says plantain there. There it is. Definitely gets this little seed stock. It's I've only seen it green myself, so there you go. This one here is a giant ragweed, which a lot of you guys that have allergies probably don't like messing with this stuff. But uh, you can really see the shape of the leaf is what helps identify that one. So guys, I think this one here is called a gooseberry. You can kind of see the leaf. This is a very thorny plant. I mean, you don't really want to grab this stem at all. This is one that always gets me. It's pretty small leaves on it. And the berries are pretty small on it too. Let's see if you can make this out. Here, I'll go ahead and pluck one of those off. Oh. There you go. You can see that little stripe in it. And I'll show you hear it in the book. Gooseberry. Current or gooseberry. There's a thorny berry version. <laughs> Definitely don't want to play with that. So guys, I thought I'd get you a good look at this one here. It's called the pokeweed. The berries turn a purple color, and you can use the berries as a dye. 
I believe when the, the plant is really young, you can, use, you can also eat it. Uh, these white stems at the top here, you know, let me poke, go ahead and pull this one off so you can see it, but this, this will have a uh, crud. Woohoo, bad filming. This will get uh, little purple berries on it. And I'll show you this one in the book. You can kind of see in the book how those purple flowers turn into those purple berries. And there's pokeweed. There you go. This one here, guys, is called buffalo gourd. You can kind of see how it vines across the ground. And it'll get a gourd of probably the size of an orange about. Now, I haven't checked any uses for the buffalo gourd yet, but yay so big. Um, I don't think it's growing any right now yet. Yeah, I don't see anything on there yet. But when it gets older, it'll definitely grow a gourd on there. And uh, I'm sure you can use it for something. So guys, here's a little bigger yucca plant. I didn't, I just got out of the trail and you can kind of see the stalk that goes up and this stalk is what we use for hand drill spindles, things like that. But here is the flower. Of course, it's got a little spider on it down there. But uh, these flowers are beautiful when they first pop out. And I have ate the flower petals on these, but they're not the best, if you know what I mean. Let's see here, there's another one right there. Here's another plant that we call um, goat's beard. You can kind of see, uh, this one here kind of reminds you of a dandelion, but just way bigger, way, way bigger. Um, this one is in the book and I'll show you that. Here, you can kind of see the top of this one has been headed out, um, kind of like a dandelion. I think it's also called salsify or something like that. I can't pronounce that one, so I, I always say goat's beard. Of course, that's uh, some fast filming. But, uh, yeah, goat's beard. So I wanted to show you that salsify or goat's beard in the book. So you can kind of see what the flower looks like. And there's the name of it. And you can see where it's listed as, sorry about that, goat's beard right there. Guys, this here is clover. This is the, particularly the white clover, and I'll let you get a good look at this one here. Well, maybe. You can kind of see the flower head on it. And we'll get you some leaves down here. These are just common plants you more than likely already know. Really, not getting that in shot. It's a leaf of a clover. And I'll show you a picture in the book. So you can kind of see, this is particularly the red clover that's in the book here, but uh, labeled as clover. There's all sorts of varieties of clover. I'm zoomed in right now, guys. That's why it kind of looks really bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Clover, there you go. So guys, this here is the prickly pear cactus. Um, it gets like a red fruit on it. I know you can't see it very well, but it's the one with the yellow flowers on it right here. And you don't really want to touch the cactus too much. Let's see if I can get a better picture of it here in just a second. But that's the point. Here I'm back down here where they are. Like I said, I don't really want to touch them. It's not going to hurt you too much, but the little tiny hairs seem to never go away. But there's the cactus. So here's the prickly pear cactus in the book. You can see the yellow flowers correspond to the plant. There you go. I wanted to share with you guys that yucca plant and you can kind of see here is a last year's dead stock. Those are good for spindles. That's what you want. Those will almost always be there with the new stocks unless they got broke off. But you can kind of see how it flowers all the way up and down the stem just beautiful and where I'm at it's pretty much a whole field of them we just pulled over um, where we're at thought I'd show you this 
So guys, I think this is an echinacea of some sort. I don't know my plants very good, but maybe you guys can kind of help me out with this. Um, pretty plant. It's got a hairy stem here, and you can see the lance-shaped leaves on the bottom. But I've got a patch of it right here. Kind of purplish flowers. 